Hi, Brett. Good evening. How are you? Okay, yay. Hello, Molly. It looks like we're waiting on Stacy. Yes. Um, Miss Miss Smith from um, Adam Board is here. So, and we have one resident. Here's Stacy. We have one resident in Council Chambers this evening who will want to make a comment. Okay, thank you. You can just, you can just lay it up there, bro. Thank you. Good, e good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order our September 28th, 2020 Reynoldsburg City Council meeting. The time is now 6.32. My name is Angie Jenkins and I am council president. This meeting is being held through electronic conferencing and live stream on the city's Facebook page. Council is still meeting virtually <laughs> as the necessary equipment needed to be live stream is being planned for our future meetings. The demand across the country has caused our cameras to be on back order. As soon as all the necessary equipment arrives, council meetings will resume in person. Residents are welcome to attend to any virtual meeting in person as council chambers are open and available for participation in our meetings. Molly, would you please call the roll? Council member Strickland. Present. Council member Salvati. Here. Council member Pecoro. Here. Council member Lawson Rowe. Here. Council member Kotner. Here. Council member Baker. Here. Council member Bryant. Here. And President Jenkins. Here. Next, we'll have the approval of the agenda. There is an amendment to tonight's agenda, item H. Under the consent agenda for first reading will be moved to item G under the consent agenda for emergency approval. If there's no other changes, the agenda stands as amended. Do we have any other changes to the agenda? Item four, approval of minutes. Approval of the city council regular meeting minutes of September 14th, 2020. Are there any additions, deletions or corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, the minutes stand approved as submitted. Item five, community comments. Molly, do we have any comments from the community this evening? Yes, we do. Mr. Lou Zader is here. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes. 
kind of stuff over here. Can you see yourself? <laughs> Got to get this newfangled devices. <laughs> Ready? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Madam President, members of council. I would like to talk to you about the way development is being handled in the city. I'm sure all of you have heard about the house that burned down and is being rebuilt on Retton Road and how out of place this is. Could you imagine adding another story to this house? Put four of those homes together as one building and then multiplying that by 10. That is what was recently proposed on Lancaster Avenue in and around one of the older sections of Reynoldsburg for a project known as the Oliver. As a former councilman, I was told projects like the house on Retton would not be allowed under the new zoning code. New or rebuilt structures would have to match the existing surrounding structures. Three-story townhomes and apartment buildings, 30 feet from one-story single-family homes, do not fit the area on Lancaster. And I do not believe was the intent of the new zoning code. I know you're also going to be having a work session tonight to discuss the zoning code. One of the things I would like you to take a look at, maybe not tonight, but in the future, is the prospect of 100 foot tall buildings on Bryce Road and Main Street. I do not think these fit in Reynoldsburg and I do not believe that is what the Reynoldsburg residents desire. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, there are no other uh, guests in council chambers or Thank no you. comments from online. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from council this evening? Madam President. Uh, yes, I like Council Member Baker. Um, I wanted to, because next month is October, I know I briefly talked about uh, at last council meeting about the Mel Clemens Community Service Award, and we'll be kicking off uh, taking nominations next month. And so I wanted to put it out there to the public and to the residents that if there's somebody that you deem that's worth um, being recognized for their community service, please fill out a nomination form. They, they will be available uh, starting next month. Um, we do this, we created this award to honor um, pa uh, Councilman Mel Clemens' memory and the years of dedication that he gave to this city and the community. And so I think this was, this was a great way to, to honor a man who, who's done a lot for the city of Reynoldsburg. Um, I asked um, Director Bauman here, in case I forgot anything, about this because she helped me put this together. So I want to give her a shout out and a thank you for, for that. And um, is there anything that I'm missing? Um, the nominations will open on October 1st. It will close on um, October 30th. And the application can be found on the city's website. We will also put it out on social media as well with the link to take them back to the website to find that application form. And there's, there is certain qualifications that the candidate must, must meet. We want to make sure that this process stay fair and true. So when the person is announced, they'll be chosen blindly. It would, um, we won't know the name of the person until after the committee um, has selected the person to be recognized. So just for those um, who are looking to nominate somebody who want to be, who's going to be going through this process, it is going to be a fair and just process. So I wanted to put that out there. That's all I have. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from council? Do we have any comments from Mayor Begany? Uh, yes, uh, Madam President, just a couple of quick uh, notes. Um, as you may have seen on Facebook today, uh, uh, the auditor, Stephen Sisak, and I had the pleasure to go out and distribute some of the first CARES funding checks 
uh, from our small business grant program. Uh, we have not hit everybody. Uh, we, we will be going to other ones. Uh, everyone is very happy with uh, the process. Uh, Stephen Sisak, myself, uh, Rick Wagner from uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chris Shook and Andrew Bauscher were all part of the committee. Uh, there were very strict rules that we had to follow uh, based on uh, legislation passed to the State House about how the amounts were determined based on uh, loss of revenue as well as expenses. Uh, so far, we are going to be distributing $92,168.67. Uh, in this first round. We still have a number of businesses that we're collecting little bits and pieces of information on from uh, the first round, uh, but considering we allocated or you allocated 300,000 for this, uh, we will be opening the process back up again uh, to businesses that maybe missed us the first time around or weren't able to gather the information in time. So it is going to go back out uh, and we are reaching out to a few of those locations now. But uh, again, uh, the city of uh, Reynoldsburg, because of the CARES Fund and your uh, legislation, we are now able to give out that 92000 and plus dollars uh, to the small businesses, which is we all know are the backbone of any community. And we want to make sure that we show them their support. Uh, um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Madam, Pres you. Madam President, I did have a question. Yes, uh, Councilwoman Strickland. Yes, um, thank you, Mayor, and everyone that was involved with this entire process. Uh, the work that you all did to make sure we get the communication out to our small business owners are uh, commended. So thank you very much. Uh, I do have a question regarding those that uh, receive the ten thousand dollars or more. Will end of it, well? Will business have the opportunity to reapply that already received grant? The grant money? I can let the city attorney answer that one, but I don't believe that they would be eligible based on uh, the criteria that was originally established with the legislation. I think it's uh, that first round and then that would be it. I think okay. the main qualifiers again were the loss of revenue and the expenses, but city attorney Shook may be able to clarify that any at all. Yeah, sure. So the, um, the Senate bill that authorizes uh, a city such as Reynoldsburg to establish a program uh, like our small business grant program, uh, limits these grants to a maximum of $10,000. Uh, most of the businesses, in fact, I think all of the businesses that qualified uh, for the maximum amount had substantially more than $10,000 in lost revenue, uh, substantially more than $10,000 in expenses, but uh, we had to, um, we, we could only give them up to $10,000. So those businesses would not be eligible to reapply uh, because they've already re reached that maximum amount. Uh, if there are any businesses that did not reach that maximum amount, that would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Perfect. Thank you. And then when is the applications going to be, um, you're going to be collecting applications for those that would like to apply uh, for the grant? We've not really had a specific date in store just because it's we're trying to move as we go along here. Um, that's going to be a lot of uh, determination from the auditor's office. We do know with a bill that was recently passed uh, that actually provides more CARES funding for the city of Reynoldsburg, um, a majority of the accounting work is not going to be due until November 15th. However, to be fair to our uh, auditing office, we have to make sure that that is all of that information and as much uh, earlier. Uh, it took us, I would say, about a week and a half to go through all the applications and then to go back and maybe ask for clarification for certain things. Uh, so I would assume within the next two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks at the absolute most would be all that we will be able to accept for at this time. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, thank you, Mayor Begney for the update. Do you have any other comments, Mayor Begney? Not at this time. Thank you. Item six. We um, will have a presentation this evening. We would like to welcome Delaney Smith, the System Chief Clinical Officer of the Alcohol, Drug and Mental Health Board of Franklin County, who will make a presentation to City Council this evening. Welcome. Thank you, Madam President and members of council. I do have slides if you would like, or I'm happy to just sort of talk about what's going on with the Adam H. Board and our levy request. Is there a preference? No, whatever is best and whatever is easiest for you at this time. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you a little bit about our organization. Um, we are a levy funded organization here in Franklin County. We serve individuals typically who um, have either mental health or substance use needs, 
but we also do quite a bit of service for those who may need prevention needs or support needs because our goal is to treat and prevent mental illness and substance use disorders in Franklin County. We do that by funding 33 different provider agencies here in the county. Um, and we do quite a bit with the school districts as well, again, focusing on prevention. So we work in all 16 of the Franklin County school districts and we have our providers going out and helping those students. Um, we strive to, again, treat those people who have mental health addiction issues as well as prevent it. Um, what we've found is that in Franklin County, 85% of the people who are receiving our services are living below the federal poverty line. So many of these individuals don't have other sources of insurance or support. We are projecting if we were to continue with our current levy amount, that we would actually have a $14 million operating deficit. Um, what we know in our county, again, is that there is going to be substantial growth. So we're expecting about 8% growth in the county over the next 10 years. What we've seen is just an increase in demand for these services. So we know that over um, the last 10 years, we've seen a 45% increase in suicides. Um, we've also been seeing increasing needs with both mental health and substance use with the impacts of COVID. So we expect this is going to sadly continue to grow. Um, we're very grateful at Adam H that we have such a supportive community in Franklin County. 71% of the funds that we get back to the community actually come from our levy. We also have some state and federal funds that we use as well. Um, currently, we have a 2.2 mil property tax levy, and we're asking that the county, um, we asked the county board of commissioners and they approved a five year 2.2 mil renewal levy with a 0.65 mil increase to support us. So this is going to be on the November 30th, 2020 ballot. Um, issue 24, which is going to be our levy, will continue to be a vital part of the community and the services that we can offer at Adam H. If passed, homeowners can expect to pay an additional $1.90 per month um, or $200, I'm sorry, $22.75 more per $100,000 in home property value. Um, so again, you know, we want to continue serving the county. We're proud of the work that we do at Franklin County Adam H Board. If anyone would like to learn more about what we do or get involved in the levy in any way, you can go to www.adamhlevy.com. Thank you. And if you do have some slides, if you could um, forward, their, forward those to Molly, our clerk, so that everyone um, will have access to gather more information from those slides, that would be great. Absolutely. Do we have any uh, questions from anyone on council? I just have a, a comment to make regarding COVID and uh, mental health and the data that you, I don't know if you have the data currently, but just, I would think that during COVID that there would have been an increase in any of these issues, alcohol, drug, mental health, and all of that. And I just, you know, feel like your program probably is very helpful for those that may be suffering during this time due to a loss of job or loss of income and all different sorts of issues that come along with COVID and people that have been ill and family members that, you know, they haven't been able to see that are in a nursing home facility or out of town. And, you know, I, during COVID it's just, we've all been on lockdown and have had issues with dealing with the stress and working from home and children and things of that nature. So I could see where um, your services would be greatly needed, especially during this time where things have been quite different for all of us. Thank you. We have noticed that, um, you know, we're noticing both increased demand for services um, and increasing, sadly, um, overdose responses in the emergency rooms due to substance use. So we are seeing the impact and the toll that this is taking on our community. Um, how many agencies are there throughout? And this is just in Franklin County, correct? That's correct. Um, so there's multiple Adam H boards across the state. Some serve more than one county, but because we're such a large county, we serve all of Franklin County. And then we um, contract with 33 different providers. So some of those providers do things like mental health crisis, some do substance use treatment. So like a net care does crisis, a Mary Haven does substance use treatment. And then we have some providers that are working on prevention specifically, trying to really you know, get to the root of the issues if we can and prevent people from needing those 
services down the line. Okay, and what is your website again? It's www.adamhlevy.com. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Madam President, can well, I if we don't have any other questions from anyone on council. Yes, I do have. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Councilman Powell. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. So my question is like uh, you mentioned in your slide, I think you mentioned from your slide that 85% of the population that you serve is uh, below poverty line. Do you have the data for racial big, uh, breakdown for those things? Because in the COVID situation that I've been in a part of the studies, other group, there's a, a very high disparities on, um, uh, on the racial line, especially African-Americans have been affected much more. Uh, with this particular thing, do you have a racial background, uh, breakdown that we can find out available, this data? I will get you um, what we have. Some of the services we have are sort of large aggregate services because it may be a prevention um, program that's in a school. So for those kind of services, we don't get the individual information, um, but for services that are sort of more individual treatment, we do get that. And then we also have some services that are directly geared towards certain populations. Um, we have a lot of work that we do with new American populations, um, with um, Somali, Nepalese. Um, so we have some work that's sort of geared directly towards um, specific and um, work with some agencies that work specifically with different populations. So I can get you some of that information. Unfortunately, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I'd be happy to share what we can. All right, thank you. Do we have any other questions? It's more of a comment. I just want to say thank you for um, Adam H for all the services and work that they provide and do because it is very and a very important agency that we have here in Franklin County because of the need is so great and it's just going to continue to grow because of the population of Franklin County is growing. So I just want to put that out there that the work that Adam H is doing and has done is great, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to um, item seven, which is a public hearing. Would the clerk please read the ordinance title? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> An ordinance creating the Wagoner Road Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive districts. This is a public hearing for the proposed Wagner Road TIF. This public hearing is being provided as an opportunity for residents to make comments regarding this TIF agreement. If anyone would like to speak on this ordinance, you can do so at this time. Do we have anyone on council who would like to speak regarding the public hearing that we're having on the proposed Wagner Road TIF? Molly, do we have any other comments from anyone of our no, residents? No, ma'am. Thank you. I, um, I do have it. But Attorney Schilt, yes. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to note that there is a there is an addition to the ordinance since the uh, first read back in July. Uh, so there is a new section five under Ohio revised code section 5709.4 subsection F13. Uh, we are making an allocation for uh, Truro Township 
uh, to account for an increase in the effective rate of a renewal levy that they passed uh, back in 2007. So that's just, that's an addition to the ordinance. Do we have any other comments from anyone on council? Yes, I have a, I have a question. Um, can anyone explain that? Uh, because I, I know a little bit about it, but I think a lot of audience, they may not know what is this. Can anyone explain what we are doing here so that audience can understand what is, what, what is being proposed, what are we gonna do? I can go ahead and uh, take this. Uh, Councilman uh, Pacarel, uh, members of council, uh, everyone watching at home, uh, this is for the Wagner Road project uh, that will allow for street improvements, including sidewalks, bike paths, uh, as well as lighting, uh, guttering, and street work, uh, storm sewers, things of that nature, all the way throughout, as well as park improvements to uh, Pine Quarry Park uh, once the development is uh, laid out. Uh, the way that we went about this for this particular project is uh, as the developments at the, the, from the MI Homes development are filled in, uh, that will kick in uh, when the TIF does start, so the money would start to accumulate. And only once we have uh, certain benchmarks for each area uh, would, the act, would the project actually move forward. So a lot of it depends on how quickly the MI Homes develops. Uh, and then from that point, then we can go ahead and begin the, the next phase, which would be the pre-engineering phase of the Wagner Road project and beyond. But the idea was to make sure that we had the money uh, in hand, so to speak, prior to actually putting anything out, knowing that we've got it coming uh, to make those um, most needed improvements. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions from council? I have just one question, Mayor Begany. When we talk about the MI homes, um, what is the total amount that we will receive from the TIF agreement with MI homes? A lot of that will be varied upon the amount, uh, the final amount of the values of the homes themselves. Uh, what we did for the early estimates, and I don't have those numbers right off the top of my head, I believe it was around $310,000 per house. Uh, was going to be the average, uh, which would put us around $21 million overall for the entire project uh, for its entirety. And that would more than sufficiently pay for not only the improvements to Wagner Road, Pine Quarry, but would also allow us to do other things with the school districts, a uh, connect Wagner Road uh, and have the path from Wagner Road to Wagner Road Middle School, Wagner Road Junior High as well. And that's in conjunction, and when that's in conjunction with the Reynoldsburg City School Board. Okay, and when will the MI home start to be built or break ground? I will leave that to uh, Development Director Andrew Bauscher. I know soon, uh, but not the exact date. Thank you, Madam President. Yes, um, they're going to start on the infrastructure still yet this year for phase one. Those plans have been uh, reviewed right now by our emh and our city engineer. Um, they hope to get that infrastructure built out and a couple of model homes so they can start to sell. Their goal is to build about 90 homes per year, which is on par with where we see them building in other areas, central Ohio. Uh, when it's all said and done, it'll be 354 total homes. 310 is a very conservative estimate. And at that, it's a brown, just shy of $110 million over four to five years after the build out. And you can take about 20% is what the city would generate. And, and the mayor was spot on with about $21 million at the end of those four or five years, just depending on how fast they get things built out. But they're going to go in four increment phases throughout the development. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from council? As there's no other comments, this public hearing is now closed. Item eight on our agenda is communications and we do not have any other communications this evening. We will move to item nine, which is motions. We have a motion to approve a resolution in support of the Franklin County Alcohol, Drug and Mental Health Board, ADAMH Board for issue 24. Council member Baker will read this legislation. Yes. Um, 
be acceptable. Whereas for uh, whereas the Franklin County Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board, Adam H, helps residents find the right places for affordability and quality support with alcohol, substance use disorder, and mental health services in Franklin County. And whereas Adam H, as as a good community partner, helps find 33 provider agencies in the county that pro by mental health and addiction services to a growing valuable population. And whereas Adam H provides alcohol, drug addiction and mental health crisis services to anyone in Franklin County, regardless of insurance or Medicaid, Medicaid coverage as 85% of the people served live below the federal poverty level. And whereas Adam H is committed to properly addressing inequalities and behavior health disparities that results from systematic <clears throat> issues of poverty and racism. And whereas more than 71% of Adam H resources come from the current 22, uh, 2.2 million property tax levy that expires in December of 20, uh, 2021. And whereas the levy mileage for Adam H has not increased in nearly 30 years, while the number of people seeking help has grown dramatically, rising 72% since uh, 2014. And whereas Adam H needs additional funding to address the increasing opioid crisis and devastating suicide rate affecting Franklin County. And whereas Human Services Levy Review Committee recommends and the Franklin County Board of Commissioners have approved pla placing a five-year 2.2 million renew levy with a 0.65 mil increase to support Adam H on the November 3rd, 2020 ballot with collections beginning in 2022. And whereas the city of Reynoldsburg is pleased to support and endorse issue 24, the Adam H levy if passed, homeowners will pay an additional $1.90 per month per 100,000 in home property value for the continue vital services of Adam H. Now, therefore, let it be resolved by Council uh, of Reynoldsburg, Ohio, that the city of Reynoldsburg hereby supports endorsed issue 24 in support of the Adam H board. And Madam President, I would like to add that these services that Adam H provides is very vital to the citizens in Franklin County because they do so much more than just provide basic services about uh, provides a life support to those who need it and so um i heavily endorse this levy because it is needed especially with the property growth i don't want to you know i'm like most people i don't want to pay higher taxes but something for this i don't mind shelling out extra money to help uh services for people who need it thank you council member baker are there any questions or comments from anyone on council May I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'd like to make that motion, Madam President. Thank you, Council Member Baker. Is there a second? Second. second. Councilwoman Lawson-Ro. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, everyone. We'll move on to item B, a motion to approve a resolution recognizing Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Council Member Kotner, please. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, unfortunately, a resolution that is uh, still needed that we all wish could go away, but uh, we know many lives touched by cancer and uh, unfortunately many of us uh, seen the tragedy of childhood cancer and um, uh, so uh, as September is the uh, childhood cancer awareness month and um, you know we see people lighting lighting up gold for childhood cancer awareness uh, it's very important to those those children and those families that are battling this and so I'm uh, very proud to to uh, read this resolution this evening a uh, resolution recognizing Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas childhood should be a time of joy, laughter, innocence, and wonder. 
Sadly, more than 15,000 American children and adolescents endure the pain, heartache, and uncertainty of a cancer diagnosis each year. Whereas today, cancer is the leading cause of death from disease beyond infancy for our nation's youth, and in 2020 alone, it is expected to take the lives of approximately 1,200 children under 15 years of age. Whereas during National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, we recognize the courage and strength of the brave children battling a cancer diagnosis, and we reaffirm our commitment to combating pediatric cancers and supporting these children and their families and friends in their fight. And whereas over the last half century, substantial progress has been made in the diagnosis and treatment of several types of childhood cancer. Yet our resolve to endure that every child can grow up cancer-free has never been stronger. We remain dedicated to the goal of ending childhood cancer and continuing to improve the care for all these children. And whereas during National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, we honor the memory of the precious children and adolescents who lost to cancer and pray for their families and friends as they remember their loved ones. And whereas the city of Reynoldsburg, the city council, the Reynoldsburg City Council reaffirms our admiration and respect for the healthcare professionals who've continued to work tirelessly for those children during the coronavirus pandemic so that every child can enjoy a future filled with promise, good health, and hope. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Reynoldsburg to hereby proclaim September 2020 as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and call upon all citizens of Reynoldsburg to recognize the effect of childhood cancer has on those around them and to make themselves more aware of the efforts to fight childhood cancer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kotner. Do we have any other questions or comments from anyone on council? May I have a motion for approval? I will make a motion to approve this, please. Thank you, Councilmember Kotner. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Councilmember Sabati. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Item C is a motion to approve a resolution accepting, approving, ratifying the submitted recommendations of several city of Reynoldsburg tax incentive review councils. Are there any questions or comments from council? I'd like to ask if um, Auditor CSEC, are you on the line today? I am council president. Okay, great. Can you um, speak to this, please? Uh, these Turk meetings took place under the direction of development director Bowser. He's the uh, person that should actually speak on them. But these okay. are meetings that we had in July uh, that were done with the three counties that we we're attached to, uh, including County Otter Stenziano and Fairfield and Lincoln County, where we reviewed our TIF agreements. Some of the uh, agreements that we get with the TIFs came with um, refunds, like uh, the Home Depot and Walgreens on Brace Road. So as we go forward and do talk about TIFs, we do have to be mindful that the conditions and economics do change in a situation, especially if we're going to be you know, borrowing money and doing big projects. So it's something that we really have to keep a look on I look at and be mindful of, but I would uh, let development director Bowser speak more on this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Auditor Sisak, uh, Madam President and the members of council. Um, this is a check in the box that we do every year. Uh, as the auditor had mentioned, we utilize three counties. Uh, we have a, a different TIF in each uh, in fact, uh, we have the Bryson Main TIF, uh, Taylor Square TIF, a Taylor Road TIF 1 and 2, the Kroger TIF, uh, that is the Kroger on Taylor, and then the Summit Road TIF. 
Um, basically, what we do is we uh, come together, the school board is there, the city, uh, the county auditors themselves are a representative and, and other stakeholders there uh, within the general uh, vicinity of the TIF. The idea is, is they, we come together, we review the type of uh, monies being collected. If we would like to vote to continue those TIF, typically they're at a 30 year time clock, just like the one that we're doing on Wagner Road. So that will add to sort of this compilation uh, every single year. We'll review it and make sure that it's still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, we vote on it and then we move forward. And these minutes before you tonight are to accept the findings of those Turk boards, which is that we agreed to continue all of the TIFs currently uh, within the city of Reynoldsburg. Is this something that is um, done yearly? Is this TIF money that we get every year and we account for it at a certain time every year? Is this um, something that we're talking about for 2020 and collecting for 2020 just for this year? Cor correct. Uh, the tax increment financing is, is something uh, basically allocated off of the property taxes. Uh, the Kroger TIF is about ready to run, and I believe this was in its last year. And we have some other ones that are have been in effect for 15, 20 years, um, some that have just kind of started as well. So uh, as we add more, we'll add more to these. As they fall off and they become defunct, uh, we'll no longer review them. And yes, we do collect the monies. Uh, the auditor and his staff um, basically keep a compilation of everything that we are. Uh, the mayor and our staff, uh, you know, will review and we can allocate those money to infrastructure or utility improvements within the general uh, area. And um, I can utilize those funds for that. But this is basically just accepting our findings that they're all still in good standing. And it is something that we do every year. Okay. So then all of the 2019 have already been collected and accounted for? Correct. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments from council? If there's no other questions, may I have a motion for approval? So moved. Thank you, Council Member Peckerell. Is there a second? I'll second. Council Member Baker, second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to item D. A motion to approve a resolution to authorize the mayor to advertise for bids for the irrigation of the landscaping beds and plants for phases one and two of the Main Street corridor corridor revitalization for 2021 and 2022. Are there any questions or comments from council? Mayor Begney, would you like to um, speak to this resolution? I believe this will fall under <laughs> Director Bauman's purview on this particular topic. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam President, members of council. This is for the uh, irrigation for the uh, that runs through all of Streetscape. It's about a three mile um, stretch there on both sides of the road of Main Street from the city limits. And uh, it's a contract that we put out every two years to have that maintained by a, by a contract that we able to collect. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments from council? Council, I'm um, sorry, Madam President, I would like to yes. ask a question. Um, Ms. Donna, is, are we going with the same person or company that does a lot of the landscaping uh, for Reynoldsburg? Well, this is for the irrigation. So it's not right. for, this will take care of all of the uh, the irrigation that runs through it. So they will winterize it. They'll start it up in the spring, replace any of the heads, fix any leaks that come along the way. Currently that contract is with EMI. And okay. so what we'll do is we will put it out to bid and we will select whoever the lowest and best bidder is that from the bids that come in. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions or comments from council? 
I have a quick question. Once you get the bids in, when will this um, process begin? So what we'll do is we're still finalizing the bid book. So we'll put that out to, to run for advertising. It usually runs for two to three weeks. Then once the bids come in, we will open those bids, do our uh, you know due diligence to research each company. And then this contract won't begin until 2021. Okay. So in January or in the spring? In the spring, yes, ma'am. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other questions or comments from council? May I have a motion for approval? I so move. Council Member Strickland, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Council Member Pacquarell, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Item E, a motion to approve a resolution to authorize the mayor to advertise for bids for the maintenance of landscaping beds and plants for phase one and two of the Main Street Corridor revitalization for 2021 and 22. Do we have any questions or comments from council? Donna? Okay. This will be for the uh, for the maintenance of the flowers. So doing any of the pruning, uh, the cutbacks in the uh, in the spring or in the fall, putting down the mulch, the weeding, uh, trash pickup. Also, um, we may if depending upon how things come in and if we bid it alternately, we've had a lot of plant material that has died off over the years. So we're going through um, to see if we can get uh, them to do an alternate bid as well to try to replace some of those plantings that have died off. And this will also begin in 2021 and be for 21 and 22. Okay, well, what's the difference between the one we just spoke about previously and this one? Is this one just for the plants? Right, and the, other the first one's one was beds? for the Right, the first one was for the irrigation. And so that irrigation is a specialized service. Um, in okay. years past, we lumped them together, but um, in 2019, we decided that we needed to try to break it out to get somebody who was specialized in that system. And okay. so that's why we separated irrigation and landscaping. Okay, okay. So the first one was for irrigation and this one's for the maintenance. Yes, ma'am. Got All the flowers and the trees and the mulching. Okay. Do we have any other questions from council or comments? May I have a motion for approval? I so move. Move. Council member Strickland, do we have a second? I'll second. Council member Savati, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Item F, a motion to approve a resolution stating what services the city of Reynoldsburg will provide to the proposed annexation of property at 1750 Lancaster Avenue. Are there any questions or comments from council? Is um, Andrew Bowser, would you be able to speak to this? Thank you, Madam President. Um, this comes before you tonight. Um, the, the Russell's uh, property, uh, just about uh, three quarters of an acre, uh, their septic system has uh, basically failed. They are in what we consider the uh, old Reynoldsburg neighborhood uh, area. They're, they're not in the city currently. Uh, their neighbor actually just annexed into the city uh, back in November of last year, uh, Mr. Dick Barth. Um, and so we passed this. This, this is the first, um, uh, basically the first time council will see this. It will go off to the county uh, for Franklin County's approval. It'll come back to us and uh, we'll make the final recommendation. I believe right now, and I think Director Dorman can, can answer it more uh, specifically, but I think we're allowing them to go ahead and tie into the existing infrastructure uh, all of the infrastructure that's there is currently at the road on Lancaster Avenue. Uh, so they have the ability to tap in, uh, given they, they pay for the tap fees uh, there. Mr. Dorman, did you have anything that you wanted to add? No, I mean, we would be fine running that concurrent. I mean, typically you would have most 
most cases when someone accepts it to sailing, you have to manage in the city, and then they would uh, connect either to the city's sewer water. Um, the tap is readily available, so we could run these concurrently. Obviously, um, it's more of an emergency. Obviously, with their system failing, they need to get that fixed as soon as possible. Thank you. Do we have any yes. other questions or comments from council? Uh, uh, yes, this is Councilwoman Strickland. Um, Mr. Dorman, um, how long does this process normally take when you're doing the annexation and you have to get the county involved and everything? Longly, how, how long does this process normally take? Do you know? Well, I'll just, go ahead. Council, Councilwoman Strickland, uh, the process can take anywhere between four to six months. Uh, this is a type two, uh, it's an expedited annexation, so it'll go a little faster, but it's just, a, it's a lot of paperwork and a lot of process. Obviously it comes to us first to motion. And basically what you're saying tonight is as council, you're saying, yes, we do have the utilities and infrastructure in place to provide these services to this individual, which we do. Uh, and then it goes off to the county. They do their checks and balances. They make sure that the property is surveyed and they have all their paperwork. Then the county commissioners will vote on uh, said it'll probably be sometime in probably November. It'll come back to us. We'll probably see it again in December to have a final vote on it. Um, and we can pass it uh, typically in three reads. If we wanted to be expedited, obviously um, that would be up to council's choice. Thank you. Madam Chair, I mean, there is a 60 day waiting period once the Franklin County Commissioners approve the annexation process, there's a 60 day waiting period prior to it coming back to council by state statute. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments from council? Madam President, this is the auditor. I have a comment I'd like to make. Yes, please. Um, a few weeks ago, a company do donated a truckload of water to the city of Reynoldsburg, and one of the residents came out to talk to me about his water rates. He is in the township, and he told me that he was paying a higher rate than the city, uh, a city resident would pay. And I said I would look into it, and I discovered a 1966 ordinance that charges members of the township that are not in the city one and a half times their water rate. So I think this is a, a good way for people to uh, annex into the city so that they do have the regular rate uh, for water and the other services. And this is something I wanted to bring to your attention and to council. Thank you. Um, that's welcome. very important to know. Thank you for that information. That's You're very welcome. valuable. Do, um, do this, this council woman Strickland, do we know how many homes that um, may be possibly impacted by this um, one point being charged 1.5 times the amount of water? Um, then I don't know who may have that information. Are, are we contacting these, you know, the residents or how are we going about doing it? Just waiting on our neighbors to contact us? Well, that would, I'm sorry. Councilwoman, that would be the township, or whatever township we could ask them. If they're doing the billing, they would be able to tell you how many people they're billing for water and who that water source is coming from. Because obviously we're billing them, and then they're passing that cost along. So you would have to talk to each township, and they would have record information. Our water department would not have that information. We would just have how much leaves the city line and enters the township line where they're getting billed. Potentially we could have, I could check too, we could have some people that are, I know, I know that it was kind of odd. I did find some people that are specifically in the historic um, area of Lancaster or Reynoldsburg or you know, Lancaster, Jackson area that are in little odd areas that are in the township that are getting public water, um, but are still not incorporated. They're still in the township. So there may be a few residents like that, but typically I know that most jurisdiction, jurisdictions sell their water to a budding jurisdiction to then have the ability to charge whatever rate they, they choose. And to kind of piggyback on that, um, I don't have an exact number. I'm sure uh, uh, Director Dorman and myself can find out specifically, but I would say roughly there's somewhere between 30 to 40 homes that could be potentially impacted by this. 
uh, that we probably service probably water and, and Mr. Dorman was correct. We, we do have a lot in sort of the south of uh, south of Maine around uh, Turo, Jackson and, and Lancaster. A lot of them have water, but a lot of them have septic. So I think that you're going to see this happen a lot more frequently as these homes in these areas continue to age. The septic systems, we're not allowing them to put any back in. EPA won't allow it. Um, it it's just not safe back into those yards and, and they have readily available all of our services that are there. So I think you're going to see probably, you know, two, uh, two a year probably moving forward as we continue to do that. And maybe it's something uh, of an initiative to, to get these to kind of come in all at once. Uh, the goal and, and by state statute, we're technically not allowed to uh, leave basically donut hole shapes inside of, of the city. And we do have some kind of Swiss cheese, if you will, within the city where they're not quite annexed in. And this just happened as we've kind of grown. Uh, there's just been homes that have, you know, not needed to annex in or did not want to pay the tap fees because they can be uh, pricey at times. So we've kind of just allowed them to come into the city uh, when they felt like they've wanted the city services. Gotcha. Thank you. Just to, just to add to that real quick, too, and I had a conversation with the Board of Health a few, maybe last week or the week prior. And typically, if someone has a failing system, they have 90 days. Um, to tie in, they'll typically give them 90 days, sometimes less, depending on what the discharge is and where it's going to. Um, but the other thing uh, important to remember is, you know, that's like Andrew Bowser, Director Bowser said, is you know, it does add cost, uh, considerable cost uh, to tie in. Um, so most people, you know, what you'll see is on a real estate transaction, if someone would ask for an inspection of the system, the Board of Health has 4,000 aerators, and unfortunately, they are not probably inspected as, as frequently as it should be. However, when there's a real estate transaction, if you ask that to be inspected, that's typically when that would come up. Or in this case, when someone maybe gets backup in their system um, is more more often than you're going to realize this and people are going to ask it to, to tie in. Do we have any other questions or comments from anyone on council? May I have an, a motion for approval? I move to Council Member Baker. Is there a second? Second. Council Member Savati. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll move on to item 10, which are the reports. Development Parks and Recreation Committee, Council Member Baker. Uh, yes, uh, Madam President, uh, this is the Development Parks and Recreation Committee. Uh, this meeting is held on September 28th, 2020. Members in attendance are Council Member Cotner, Council Member Packerow, Council Member Lawson Rowe, myself, and you, Madam President. Um, the first item on the agenda is an ordinance authorizing the city auditor to remove equipment from the city's fixed asset list for the Parks and Recreation Department. Director Ballman, would you like to speak on this ordinance? Yes, thank you, Chairman Baker, members of the committee. Um, we have a 2000 Dodge Dakota that has been um, pulled out of service at the recommendation of the fleet mechanic at as it is um, unsafe and it's gonna be too costly to repair it. So we would like to just have that removed from the city's fixed asset list. And then we will either um, sell that at auction or take it to the scrapyard. Or I should say the city's Gov Deals website. Okay. Is there any questions or comments from the committee on this legislation? Okay. Seeing none. Um, oh, is there any from council? Okay. Seeing none. Um, I'll move forward this ordinance to council for its first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Packero. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, none, motion carries. The next yep. item on the agenda is an ordinance amending chapter 11, planning and zoning code for the city of Reynoldsburg. This order ordinance would actually be for work session. And so I will go ahead and ask uh, city attorney Shirker or director Boucher, would you like to speak on this ordinance? Sure. Um, 
So we've now been operating under the, uh, the new zoning code for uh, just a little under six months. And, you know, we're you know, getting more familiar with it and some of the things that, um, that we like, and I think some of the things that we, we probably don't like. Uh, and so we are uh, putting council on notice now in this work session that we are intending to make changes. Some of the changes are already specified uh, in your packet, um, but we are leaving it open for council members to make uh, suggestions, recommendations for any changes that you would wanna see uh, on this zoning code going forward. Um, the timeline is gonna be such that this would come back uh, to council for a first read on October 12th. It would then be referred to the planning commission for a public hearing, which would take place at their November meeting on November 5th. It would then have to come back before this council for a public hearing on November 9th. Um, and third read would, would likely take place November 23rd, effective date, December 23rd. I, I, th I think what we're, what we're trying to make sure that we're doing right now uh, is ensure that any potential issues that we've noticed with the zoning code get cleared up at this point, because this isn't something that we want to bring back to the city on an annual basis. Uh, but nonetheless, there are some issues that we've identified, some of which are in your packet, and some of which I think that many of this council uh, might identify as well uh, that we want to address going forward and, and get the zoning code uh, completely uh, cleaned up. Um, is there any questions or comment from the committee on this piece of legislation? Uh, is there any from council? Yeah, this is Councilwoman Strickland. So yes. I know you said, um, Attorney Shook, that there are some issues that you uh, that we should be reviewing, based off of the um, what was published this evening. What are some of the, at a high level of the ones that we need to really take a look at and consider making some changes in that particular area? Yeah, I mean, I can give you some examples. I, I, one thing that uh, I had a detailed conversation with uh, Director Bowser about and with uh, Mayor Begany is how we want to approach that um, Livingston and Bryce district, which is currently zoned as an innovation district uh, and what types of uses that, that we would find to be most ideal in that particular district. I, We've had some discussion about whether we want to make that instead community commercial, which would uh, broaden the number of permitted uses out there. Um, that's a discussion that is ongoing. I don't think that we've made any commitment as to what we want to do uh, right now with that district, but uh, I can tell you it's, it's a topic of discussion within city administration. Uh, in addition, we're looking at uh, some of the height maximums in some of the districts. Uh, we're looking at uh, process and procedure uh, for example, how it is that we grant a similar use determination. And one of the things that I wanna see personally is to put a little bit more teeth into how it is that we enforce this code when we have people who are violating it. Um, you know, we've had you know, some issues that have come up uh, since the zoning code was passed with respect to, for example, businesses operating in residential districts. And how is it that we can motivate uh, people who are violating, violating the code in those districts uh, to cease operation of those businesses? So that's just a few of the things that we're looking at, but um, we're looking at the whole code. I mean, we are we are taking a close look at it and, and seeing what it is that, that we can make work for this city going forward. Yeah, and by no means are we, are we really adjusting sort of the meat and potatoes. We're really just taking a look at, you know, the districts that we have and we're kind of recalibrating them after getting to see it for six months. When you build out something from scratch at 260 odd pages, um, you know, things are going to be overlooked and really you need test cases, you need development that kind of uh, challenges those and then you can kind of adjust and relook at how that was actually supposed to be formulated in there. What you don't want is you don't want to overburden certain boards with a bunch of variances and at the same time as you want to hold developers more accountable. Uh, so you don't want it to be so loose. So, so it's a it's a balancing act and, and what we're doing now is we're taking lessons learned on what we've had and we're just making it better at this point. Yeah, so thank you for that. Um, as you stated before, I truly believe that the uh, planning and zoning code is a living document, right? So we can make those uh, changes as needed. Um, as uh, Attorney Shook stated before, that it's only been really like six months or so that we've really been using the zoning code. So uh, again, 
we have to take our time, go through it. And then maybe next year, you know, something comes up, we need to really go back and look at it uh, because it is a, a, a living document. And so we need to adjust where it's required. Um, so I appreciate because as you stated before, uh, the, the planning zone was probably, what, 1963, 1967 and was patched. Um, and, and so just taking a step back and looking at the document and then getting something passed and then going back because it is a living document. So we have to make some updates when it's required. So thank you. Okay, is there any other comment from council or the committee? Um, yes. Council. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know where I went. Okay. Um, so couple couple quick questions. We're only six months into this code. Um, and uh, Mr. Bowser, you just said there will be test cases. What has come along in these six months of, of test cases that, that is a, a catalyst to some of these changes? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, Council Member uh, Cotner. Um, so like one of them, for, for example, for the CC district, our new Chick-fil-A that's going to be built here this March, um, it had to get a couple of variances off of um, its setbacks. Uh, the CC district is 256. I mean, that is basically what encompasses that. And how it was kind of written was uh, pushing the buildings too close to, to 256. And that's not what that is. Uh, the, the more urban uh denser sort of development like on Main Street where we're bringing some of the, the buildings closer like we did with the right pad and some of the other buildings, uh, that's where that belonged, not necessarily the CC. So we're adjusting that setback to make sure that developments like that, that we're not making them jump through a whole bunch of hoops, spending additional time and money when that type of development fits perfectly within that district and zone. Um, same thing goes with the, the, the caliber. Uh, automotive that was back over in that area. Uh, we spent a long time trying to find somebody in that. It's been vacant since that entire area was built when the Walmart was built. So it's been vacant for that long. Finally got a user. Last thing that you want to do is make them spend a bunch of time and money trying to fit something which didn't make a lot of sense. So, so we just have to recalibrate and take a look at it. And when you're, when you're looking at an entire book, sometimes it's perfect in your head and that doesn't always necessarily uh, work out exactly on, on, on paper. Uh, as Mr. Shook had pointed out, some, some, of, the, some of the height maxes, we're probably going to adjust and lower some of those to, uh, to bring that uh, into a more realistic compliance. And, and really just uh, kind of taking a look at that innovation, understanding that, yeah, we want a lot of businesses in that area. At the same time, we want to offer a variety of businesses and we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into uh, specific things so, so those are the things that we're taking a look at. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Administrator, Emily Wheeler, and myself, we, we've kind of drafted some of those things, uh, some of them grammatical and spelling mistakes, but a lot of them is just fixing some of the, the smaller things such as that. And then I think uh, collectively, I think we're going to get back together and, and really uh, hone in on some of those other things. And we'll be uh, very happy to, to openly share that with everybody and have a uh, future discussion on that first reading. But we hope to have... Uh, pretty much everything ready to go. And, and as uh, uh, council member Strickland had said, you know, it's kind of a living document. So I don't think this is gonna be the first, but we certainly don't wanna make a habit of consistently bringing it back, uh, but certainly want to reevaluate and just keep testing it as new cases come along and making sure that uh, we're doing everything that we need to to make the city the way that it needs to look in the certain districts and zones. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody else have a comment or? Uh, I, have a, I have a question. So um, my just my question, uh, more than a statement, but more than a question is, so we are uh, bringing this for a relook, not because there are some business are not fitting in this one, just because that we want to address it as a whole, right? Not, not for a particular business so that they can come and do the things uh, with the change code or whatever it may be. Co correct. Anybody else? And one of the things I know, sorry, um, one of the things we, we highlighted in our package now, there seems to be a lot of changes on signs already too. Um, what's, what's kind of been the thought on some of the sign issues? Have we been having challenges already with, with some of that or again? It's, 
No, no, no. Council member Cotner. Um, it's not necessarily the, the challenges. Um, basically what we allow is we allow a certain business to pick two different sign types in each district. And we, we lay that out very detailed into the code. However, there, there needed to be some, some clarification, uh, like, uh, the window signs themselves, those needed to be a supplemental and not a primary window type. Uh, we don't consider that because we already have a sign code that dictates that only a certain percentage can utilize the window. So that shouldn't count against a certain business that wants to have an actual sign on their building. And it currently is now the way that it's written. It's just a mistake that was written in there. So basically it's us rewording it and making sure that uh, we're getting rid of some of the redundancies that are in there and making sure that the specifics are, are where they actually need to be. Um, and, and so so that's kind of what we're taking a look at. And then additionally, we have found um, it, it, specifically, if you're taking a look at where the Best Buy is, uh, the big Sandy stores. So those areas all have three signs. They have one on the front part of their building. They have one that faces Taylor Road, but they also have another one on 70, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. They're big box buildings. They want to have visibility. That's the area where those signs should be located at. Well, currently, we actually only allow them to have one. So that was a mistake. So what we have to do is, is we have to make sure that we're allowing those types of businesses to have three signs because it makes a lot of sense. But a place that's like Walgreens that's on Main Street shouldn't have three very large signs. So it's just about making sure that we're calibrating certain businesses and not trying to, like we said, pigeonhole every business to be exactly the same. So th those are some of the adjustments that we're making. Also, the, uh, the uh, table in, in and amongst itself, uh, that was a big sticking point for, for Emily. Uh, she really wanted to change that so it's more user friendly and, and readable for a lot of our, our uh, sign design individuals that come into City Hall looking for the specifics of those codes. So a window sign is not considered a sign then now. That, that, that falls under a different uh, guide with, when we have you know, specials up in the windows and posters and windows, things like that. That's something separate than our signs. Those yes, well, so there's a primary sign and then there's a secondary sign. So for, let's say for, for any business that's in Old Reynoldsburg, what would make a lot of sense with somebody with a sandwich board sign? That's a supplemental sign. Well, a window sign, somebody putting in, hey, we have a special, that should have also been a supplemental sign but it was utilized as a primary sign, which means that it was limiting that business's ability to put up a, a legitimate sign on their building. It was just put into the wrong column. So that needed to be adjusted to allow for them to have that and also to have an actual primary sign. Anybody else have a question or comment? I am uh, since seeing them, but I am going to say this. I'm glad that we're kind of going into halftime per se, so we can look at the strategies that have been working for the team and what has not been working, so we can adjust accordingly to make sure that everything is fluent moving forward. And, and so we won't have to worry about trying to patch things together in the future, because like Councilwoman Strickland said, it is a living document. And we want to make sure that it grows along with the city, but not looking like Frankenstein. So seeing that and no other questions uh, from council, this I'm going to um, make this or, or motion that this ordinance stay in committee and come back at our October 12th meeting, uh, 2020 meeting. Um, the next item for discussion is an ordinance to dissolve Reynoldsburg Economic Development Incorporated and the former Reynoldsburg Community Improvement Corporation and transfer any remaining funds to the general fund of the city to be distributed for charitable purposes. Attorney Shicker, Director Bowser, would you like to speak on this ordinance? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this. Um, so as, as council may be aware, last summer, uh, this council passed an ordinance creating a community improvement corporation for the city of Reynoldsburg. Uh, what we found is that uh, the city actually had um, two other community improvement corporations that have been created, uh, one back in 1966 and another back in 1995. 
uh, for the portions of the city that were in Fairfield and Licking County. Uh, both of those CICs ultimately uh, were canceled by the Ohio Secretary of State, uh, one back in 2005 and one back in 2018. Uh, because there had been no statement of continued existence for uh, either of the community improvement corporations. Uh, it just so happens that the CIC or the REDI uh, CIC has about $354 left in its account. And so the state auditor has asked us to pass an ordinance uh, formally dissolving both of those CICs uh, so that uh, we can have that money sent back into our general fund. And then uh, revised code uh, section, um, I don't know if I cited that in the ordinance. Revised code section 1724.07a uh, requires us to distribute that uh, money for charitable purposes uh, upon dissolution of a community improvement corporation. Uh, so that's what this ordinance does. It closes up those two old CICs and um, allows us to move on with the new one. Okay. Um, is there any questions from the committee on this item? I just have one simple one. Um, which uh, which charities will that three hundred fifty four dollars go to? I wish I could say we have, we've identified that, but um, I think that we are open to suggestions. Okay. Any other questions from the committee? Any from council? Uh, Mayor Begney. Well, uh, perhaps as uh, Councilman Codner had mentioned that this is childhood cancer awareness, maybe that would be something that we could look for uh, for these remaining funds for maybe St. Jude's or any other local charity for childhood cancer. I would suggest uh, the Sam Bish Foundation. Or NC4K. There's no, there's no shortage of needs, that's for sure. Unfortunately so. Definitely. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Seeing them from uh, council, I move that we forward this ordinance uh, on the council for its first reading. Do I have a second? Bueller? Bueller? Second. Second by uh, Councilman Cotner. <laughs> Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, this ordinance will be forwarded to council for its first reading. Uh, as there is no further business in front of the Parks and Recre uh, Development Parks and Recreation Committee, I will return this back over to you, Madam President. Thank you. Our next report will come from Public Safety, Public Safety Law and Courts Committee, Council Member Bryant. Thank you, President Jenkins. Uh, this is the Public Safety Law and Courts Committee meeting for September 28th, 2020. Members in attendance are Council Member Kotner, Council Member Pecorell, Council Member Lawson Rowe, myself and President Jenkins. Uh, first item is an ordinance authorizing the city auditor to remove equipment from the city's fixed asset list. Uh, Chief Baker. Thank you. This is a request to remove two items. Uh, one being a ballistic shield that is damaged and expired, and the second item being a body wire that's outdated and no longer operational. Okay, can you explain what the body wire is? Is that what it sounds like? That's what it sounds like. It's, uh, okay. it's just eight outdated technology. We use a different technology and we use in the past, rather not get into the specifics of some agencies may use uh, this technology, it could compromise the safety of individuals wearing it. Sure. Um, do we have any questions or comments from the committee on this legislation? Any questions or comments from council? All right, with that, um, going to forward this ordinance for a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by council member Pecorell. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to council for first reading. 
If there's no further business before the Public Safety Law and Courts Committee, I return the meeting to President Jenkins. Thank you. Next report will be from Public Service and Transportation Committee, Council Member Strickland. Yes, thank you, Madam President. This is the Public Service and Transportation Committee meeting for September the 28th, 2020. Members in attendance are Council Member Cotner, Council Member Pacquiao, Council Member Lawson Rowe, myself, and President Jenkins. Item number one, an ordinance to amend chapter 1711, nuisance and property maintenance of the codified ordinance of the city of Reynoldsburg. Second reading was on 9-14-2020. This ordinance is before council for a third reading and amending. Attorney Ship, would you like to say a couple things about this? Yes, thank you, Council Member Strickland. Uh, this is up for a third read this evening. Uh, the second, uh, the second chapter 1711 attached to your agenda pack, it will include the latest changes uh, to this ordinance. Uh, the significant changes that we are looking at are our enforcement procedures and in allowing us to uh, pursue civil penalties for property maintenance violations. In particular, uh, under section 1711.98, it would grant the city the ability to be able to impose daily civil penalties uh, for continued violations and give the city the ability to be able to file civil action against uh, property owners, obtain judgment for those daily fines. Uh, it does include an exemption that it does not apply to residential property that is owner occupied. So that is not a provision that we would ever wanna enforce against a resident in the community. It is mainly for commercial property uh, and non-owner occupied rental property. Uh, we also uh, wanted to be a little bit more clear about what our enforcement procedures would be in working with our code officers this year. Uh, we, are, we are continuing to try to find the best way to be able to serve violations, uh, pursue corrective action, um, and then ultimately, if we don't get corrective action, cite people into the mayor's. Uh, the third significant change would be a section um, on how it is that we address emergency situations where we might have uh, a premises or a building that presents an imminent risk of, of danger to health or safety of occupants or surrounding properties and how it is that we are able to address those emergencies uh, without having to go through the other procedures that are, that are promulgated uh, in chapter 1711. Uh, this is scheduled for a third read. I would ask that this committee amend the ordinance to reflect these changes and send the matter to full council for a vote tonight. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the committee on this legislation? From council? I move we accept the amendments as proposed by attorney Shook as outlined in council's materials. Is there a second? Second. Second by council member Lawson Rowe. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is amended. I move we forward this ordinance to council for a third reading and approval as amended. Is there a second? Second. Second by council member Papriel. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to council for a third reading and approval as amended. Item number two, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to sign the project grant loan agreement with the Ohio Public Works Commission for the East Main Street Roadway Improvement. Director Dorman, can you speak regarding this ordinance? Yeah, I'm sorry, one second. Are you there, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, I'm um, sorry, can you repeat that ordinance one more time? Yes, this is the ordinance authorizing the mayor to sign the project grant loan agreement with the Ohio Public Works Commission for the East Main Street Roadway Improvement. Yes, correct. So, sorry, just want to make sure we got the right ones. So, this was the project we've been talking about for probably 
a year, year and a half now. This was the section between Davidson and Jackson Street. Um, so we applied for the funds through OPWC um, probably around over a year, about a year ago. And we went to city council to apply for the funding. And essentially all this is, and luckily we were fortunate enough to be given the, the grants. So basically tonight, all you're doing now is basically accepting the funds. That's good. Are there any questions or comments from the committee on this legislation? From council? I move we forward this ordinance to council for a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by council member Papriel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forward to council for a first reading. Item number three, an ordinance assuming maintenance responsibilities for the full width of Summit Road between the southernmost boundaries of parcel number 010-018030-00.001 and the northernmost boundaries of parcel number 010-018030.001 zero 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 upon annexation of the said said parcels into the city of Reynoldsburg agreeing to cooperate in the maintenance of said roadway and identifying the township of Edna and Licking County director Dorman or attorney Schiff, would you like to speak on this ordinance yeah I can go uh, ahead can. And... yeah go ahead Chris go ahead thanks Bill um so we have a uh, developer uh, who is buying up uh, some land over off of Summit Road and Route 40 near the corner of Summit Road and Route 40 uh, for the uh, purpose of annexing uh, into the city of Reynoldsburg. Uh, the parcels that abut Summit Road uh, would be single family residential homes coming into what are now uh, farmland. Uh, and then off Route 40, uh, the proposed development would be a mixed use development. Uh, this ordinance is required uh, because Summit Road uh, has on one side Etna Township, and then if this annexation goes through on the other side, the city of Reynoldsburg. So to facilitate the annexation, the city of Reynoldsburg is required to pass an ordinance agreeing to accept maintenance responsibility for Summit Road. Now to be fair, I believe we already uh, maintain that road um, so that doesn't put any additional burden on the city or on our street department. And I would also note that these parcels that would be annexed into the city are located in Southwest Licking School District. So uh, the additional single family home would not place any additional burden on our school district here in the city. Thank you, Tony Shipp. Are there any questions or comments from the committee on this legislation? From council? I move we forward this ordinance to council for a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by council member Lawson Rowe. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to council for a first reading. As there is no further business for the public service and transportation committee, I return the meeting to you, President Jenkins. Thank you. We'll move on to the uh, next report, which is item D, Finance and Administration Committee. And that will be presented by Council Member Sabati. Thank you, President Jenkins. Uh, this, this is the Finance and Administration Committee meeting <clears throat> for September 28th, 2020. The members in attendance are Council Member Baker, Council Member Bryant, Council Member Strickland, myself, and President Jenkins. Uh, the first item on the uh, agenda for tonight is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation to implement coverage for individuals sentenced by the Reynoldsburg Mayor's Court to perform community service supervised by the Criminal Justice Administrator. Um, does Attorney Shook or possibly Auditor Sisak have anything to say on this? Yeah, just briefly, um, 
this is a this is an ordinance that's required and an agreement with the Bureau of Workers Compensation that's required uh, if we want to have offenders who come through our mayor's courts serve community service that is supervised by uh, the city that takes place within our parks or on our streets uh, to clean up trash in our community or to clean up uh, certain areas of those parks that, that require it. Um, this is something that we've been looking at since the beginning of the year. Uh, we've been in contact with our workers' compensation provider. We've been informed that it will be a de minimis increase in our uh, in our premium at best, and that it presents no significant risk to the city to be able to do that. But it does present a significant risk to the city if we allow offenders to do community service without passing this, uh, because then we don't have subdivision liability for any injuries they may sustain while they are out there performing that service. So this is a necessary ordinance for us to be able to move forward with that community service. And it is not unusual. This is uh, something that many other municipalities throughout the state have done. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the committee on this legislation? Um, any questions from council? All right, seeing none, um, I move to forward this uh, ordinance to council for a first reading. Um, do I have a second? Second. Second by council member Bryant. Um, uh, any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the ayes have it, and this ordinance will be forwarded to council for its first reading. Okay, moving on to the second item is an ordinance to appropriate monies from the CARES Act Fund for COVID-19 pandemic-related expenses of the city of Reynoldsburg and declaring an emergency. Um, this one might be for Auditor Sisak or possibly Attorney Shook. I'll let Stephen take that one. All right. Stephen, you there? I am, uh, Chairman Silvati. Thank you. This legislation, I believe, was written by the city attorney, but this appropriates the money to the city for us to be able to reimburse ourselves for the CARES Act expenses that have been, been incurred since March. Okay, great. Um, are there any questions or comments from the committee? From council. I, I do have a question. Go ahead. Um, just one question if there was any changes to the way that the money that we have received can be spent. Not, uh, not, at, not at this time. Um, we are in conversation with the state auditor's office to get some clarification as to how it is that we can spend the money. We've looked a lot at what other communities have done with their CARES Act funding. Um, and we have some questions about whether or not uh, we are able to do some of the same things that they've done with respect to, for example, buying police cruisers so that uh, we don't have uh, officers sharing a car so that it makes it easier for the police department to be able to clean those vehicles in between shifts. Um, so those are things that we are looking at right now uh, for potential expenditures going forward. Um, there there's, continues to be ongoing discussion, obviously, in Washington, D.C., about what municipalities might be able to do with this funding going forward. Um, and I understand that there's going to be an extension of time uh, to the end of November for us to be able to continue to identify uh, future expenditures uh, for CARES Act funding. So we are looking at that on a daily basis. Thank you. Did I see a comment from Council Member Kotner? Yes, please, thank you. Just um, so again, to clarify, this is for money that has already been spent by the city and we're reimbursing ourselves. Um, can we get a list of uh, a, a simple spreadsheet of what that, what these funds were for, what we use, what we purchased with that CARES funding? Absolutely, Councilman Cotner. We are keeping track of all of that and we'll have that out to council uh, by the end of this week with as many updates as possible. Thank you. Chairman um, Salvati, oh, I'm sorry, yes. go ahead. Go, um, go ahead. Thank you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but First, I'd like to thank uh, City Attorney Shook and the mayor. Uh, we've all come together to do this work and it's taken a lot of hours. Even up to this morning coming in before we distributed these checks, I found forms from the city attorney 
protecting the city and making sure that we're compliant with the federal grant. This is new to us and none of us have handled this federal grant uh, before and the hours that he's taken from his family and the hour, extra hours that the mayor has spent reaching out to the businesses, I'd like to say thank you to all of them. I think it's really been a good team effort. Agreed, agreed. Um, I, I wanted to I wanted to just bring up, so uh, this, this is currently on uh, the agenda as a, uh, a single read uh, for adoption tonight. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any concern, uh, especially from council member Cotner for not having that table yet. Um, or if we're okay with that, or, or if how important this is that this is a single read emergency. I, I guess I would just say how important is it that it's a single read emergency? That's right. that's the bigger question. I mean, I, I, that's the, I that's trust the first the money, question. I trust yeah. the money is spent appropriately. So that's not, yeah. I, I have no faith, no doubt in uh, um, honor CIS Act, the administration. I, again, that's, that's not a, a concern or implication that there wasn't something it's more you know like just knowing where the allocation of those dollars were so that doesn't that doesn't bother me but i would just like to know it um but as far as introducing something and reading on a single read you know i'm never a fan of that councilman cotner um i think this legislation was written before the extension was granted to the city so that might have been the reason for the emergency language. We did have a deadline that was just extended into November, and I'll let uh, City Attorney Shook speak on that. Yeah, so originally the deadline for opening purchase orders for CARES Act funding was October 15th. That's, that's now been extended uh, to nearly the end of November. Uh, it really put cities in a bind uh, to try and get this money appropriated, and the money continues to come in. I, my understanding is that we have even more money coming in from the state. Um, and yet we have, you know, strings attached to that money, limitations on how we can spend it. Um, and we're trying to be very careful about that. Uh, you know, that's why we did the small business grant program. That's why you see um, a grant coming up to the hard food pantry, is that these are things that we continue to identify that we are able to spend this money on uh, that benefit the community. Uh, and we're learning more and more about it every day. So, so. Uh, it wouldn't put the city in a bind if we did this as an emergency to be approved at the next meeting? No, not on the current timeline that we have. But on, on the old timeline, yes, yes. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it as only a first read emergency for t tonight, and then uh, we'll have to, well, the president will have to amend the, uh, the agenda, I guess. Um, so uh, our... Any more questions from the committee or uh, either the auditor or, uh, or I should say from council, but uh, we already have. All right, so I'll just, uh, or I'll say any more questions and then I'll move. All right, no more questions. So um, I'll move to forward this ordinance to council for a first reading. Do I have a second? Second. All right, I'll give that one to council uh, member Baker uh, for a second. Um, and then uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, any opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Motion carries this ordinance be forwarded to council for a first reading. Um, as our next ordinance was added as a last minute addition to the agenda. Um, no. So number three is uh, an Ordinance authorizing a donation in the amount of $23,003.56 to the Heart Food Pantry Incorporated, uh, said some from the CARES Act, Franklin County Fund, and declaring an emergency. Um, does Mayor Begany want to make a comment on this? Uh, yes. Um, as you know, uh, in times of COVID and even before, uh, Heart Food Pantry has been uh, uh, incredibly helpful with members of our community. Um, they are serving well over 1,200, 1,300 families a week uh, at their facility, and their need is just as great as anyone else's. And because of the CARES money and the ability for council to distribute this, I ask for this money to go to them so they can uh, better take care of those that are in most need here. Uh, this is the first of the nonprofits. Uh, we are continuing to investigate other opportunities 
uh, for other options to use some of this CARES, fund, uh, CARES money as well, but uh, HART is the first one that was able to get everything to us that we needed for uh, this request. Okay, I guess I'll ask the same question for this one. Does, does the extension of the deadline uh, affect the uh, first week uh, immediate passage of this tonight? It, it, it would, um, but we are, as, as we identify nonprofits going forward, you know, obviously we are dealing with a high need here. If you look at the ordinance and you look at the attachments, uh, Heart Food Pantry has seen an increased demand over the course of the pandemic of over 400% uh, from needy individuals and families in our community. Uh, they continue to incur expenses to be able to provide for those families. And you know, we have an opportunity to be able to provide some assistance to them uh, as they help those families out. And, and I think that that need for Heart Food Pantry, that need for the community is an emergency. And so I would ask that council pass this as one. Well. Uh, I mean, personally, based on uh, based on some of the uh, comments at the, our last meeting uh, of people desiring that we give some of this money to groups uh, groups like the Heart Food Pantry, um, I'm in favor of going ahead and putting this on or leaving this on the agenda as approved tonight. But um, I'll open this up for any questions from uh, from the committee or the council if there's any concerns or additional questions. Uh, Chairman Savati. I think we should go ahead and pass it as an emergency because this is something that will help people immediately and not, um, I'll just stop because right there says it all. It helps people immediately. And I do want to mention, if you have gone past Heart Food Pantry or have gone to the Heart Food Pantry, there is a dire need to the point where the line for people who are going to get assistance is stretching from Heart Food Pantry all the way down Main Street to Bryce Road. So monies like this will go a long way to help a lot of people. Jim Asalati. Yes, uh, Council Member Pecro. So yeah, on the same line, I would say like we, I think seeing the need, we should go and uh, go with the emergency and get it get the money we pass into Heart Food Pantry because I think there's a need and they're addressing it. I think what, whatever we can do, let us do. And I think we should do. That's what my point. Uh, Council McCotner. Um, I will just need to say since, um, again, I know I'm the, the one that asks this often, but um, as, a, as a Heart Food Pantry board member, I can't comment any further and I will be not able to vote tonight on this issue. So that'll be the reasoning when we come to that is my status as the long-term board member. I, um, so it's not trying to be problematic, but I want to avoid any conflict. So thank you. Understood. All right, well, if there's anything I'm ever in favor of leaving on as a first read uh, approval, it's giving money to a, a charity. Um, uh, so for now, we'll, we'll leave it as is. Um, so, uh, any, any further comments? Otherwise I'll, I'll move the forward this ordinance to council for a first read and adoption. Um, is there a second? Second. Second, but well. Second, second. Yes. <laughs> second by, uh, council <laughs> member Strickland. You didn't make me have to say it, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So all in favor? Aye. Um, any opposed? All right, this ordinance will be forwarded to the council for a first reading and adoption. Um, as there's no further business for the Finance Administration Committee, I return this meeting to President Jenkins. Thank you. We will move on to item 11 on the agenda, which is consent agenda for emergency adoption. We will have items 11A through F as part of a consent agenda. All of these ordinances stand for emergency passage with the exception of G, which we have decided is going to be on the agenda for a first read. Correct, Council Member Savati? Correct, thank you. Council will move forward, forward with the consent agenda with these items will be approved as emergency measures. 
Would the clerk please I, read item? Of, I'm sorry. I just wanted we um, the um, the hard food pantry issue would be in here as well. So I'll need I we would need to pull that out of this consent agenda um, for me to be able to vote on that one separately. Okay, so we will um, amend the, the agenda to be uh, items 11A through E of the consent agenda and all of these ordinances will stand for emergency passage. If there's no other questions from anyone else on council, would the clerk please read items 11A through E. Item A, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to purchase body cameras for the police department, waive competitive bidding and declaring an emergency. Item B, an ordinance to transfer funds from the unencum unencumbered general fund to various building department accounts and declaring an emergency. C, a resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the budget commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the Franklin County Auditor and declaring an emergency. D, a resolution accepting the amount and rates as determined by the budget commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the Licking County Auditor and declaring an emergency. E, an ordinance to approve and authorize the execution and delivery of amendment number three of the joint economic development district contract number one between Etna Township and the city of Reynoldsburg, Ohio and declaring an emergency. May I have a motion to approve items 11A through E of the consent agenda for emergency approval? So moved. I'm not sure who said. Council Member Bryant. Yeah. Thank you, Council Member Bryant. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. Council Member Baker, would the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Strickland? Yes. Council Member Silvati? Yes. Council Member Pecoro? Yes. Count Council Member Lawson Rowe? Aye. Council Member Cotner? Aye. Council Member Baker. Aye. And Council Member Bryant. Aye. Seven zero, Madam President. Ordinances A through E are approved with seven votes. Yes. Thank you. Item 12, consent agenda Ma for first reading. I'm sorry. Madam President, we need to go back and vote on item F uh, as an emergency measure. Okay. Thank you. We will now have a motion to approve item 11 F. I'll read the On the consent agenda for emergency approval. I'll read the uh, item F is an ordinance authorizing a donation in the amount of $23,003.56 to the Heart Food Pantry Inc. said some from the CARES Act Franklin County Fund and declaring an emergency. May I have a motion? So move. Council Member Savati, may I have a second? Second. 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 Council second. Member Correll. With the clerk. Would the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Strickland? Aye. Council Member Silvati? Aye. Council Member Pecoro? Aye. Council Member Lawson Rowe? Aye. Council Member Cotner? Abstain. Council Member Baker? Aye. Council Member Bryant? Aye. Madam President, the vote was six affirmative votes with one abstention. Yes, ordinance, ordinance 11F is approved with a six vote approved and one abstained with no negative votes. We will move on to item 12, consent agenda for first reading. Items A through E are part of a consent agenda. All of these ordinances stand for first reading unless someone wants to remove an item for further discussion. 
Would the clerk please read items 12A through F. Item A, an ordinance authorizing the city auditor to remove equipment from the city's fixed asset list for the Parks and Recreation Department. Item B was removed from the agenda. Item C, an ordinance to dissolve Reynoldsburg Economic Development Inc. and the former Reynoldsburg Community Improvement Corporation and transfer any remaining funds to the general fund of the city to be distributed to charitable purposes Item D, an ordinance authorizing the city auditor to remove equipment from the city's fixed asset list for the Reynoldsburg Police Department. Item E, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to sign the project grant loan agreement with the Ohio Public Works Commission for the East Main Street Roadway Improvements. Item F, an ordinance assuming maintenance responsibility for the full width of Summit Road between the southernmost boundary of parcels 010-0180 30-00.000 and the northernmost boundary of parcel number 010-018-030-00.000 upon annexation of the said parcels into the city of Reynoldsburg, agreeing to cooperate in the maintenance of said roadway and indemnifying the township of Etna and Licking County. Item G, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation to implement coverage for the individual sentenced by the Reynoldsburg Mayor's Court to perform community service supervised by the Criminal Justice Administrator. And item H, an ordinance to appropriate monies from the CARES Act Fund for COVID-19 pandemic related expenses of the city of Reynoldsburg and declaring an emergency. Thank you. So those were items 12A through H with the removal of B, correct? Yes. Thank you. These ordinances will stand for a first reading. Item 13 is a consent agenda for a second reading. Items 13A through H are part of a consent agenda. All of these ordinances stand for a second reading. If there are no other questions, the request for items to be removed from this consent agenda, will the clerk please read items 13A through H. Item A, an ordinance creating the Wagoner Road Tax Increment Financing incentive districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purchase and exempt from the real property taxation, requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. Item B, an ordinance to establish Chapter 163 Civilian Review Board for the codified ordinances of the City of Reynoldsburg. Item C, an ordinance appropriating funds from the unappropriated general fund to the police department for the don or donated monies. Item D, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to purchase radios for the police department and waive competitive bidding. Item E, an ordinance authorizing the clerk of council to certify nuisance costs for 2019 for collection by the Franklin County Auditor. Item F, an ordinance authorizing the Clerk of Council to certify nuisance costs for 2019 for collection by the Licking County Auditor. Item G, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with ODOT for guardrail repairs on State Route 256 within the city of Reynoldsburg. And item H, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with emh &T for the engineering engineering plans and preparation of bid documents for the 2021 street improvement program and appropriating funds therefore. These ordinances will stand for a second reading. Item 14, consent agenda for third reading and approval. Items 14A through D are part of a consent agenda. All of these ordinances stand for a third reading and approval. If there are no other if there are no questions to be removed from this consent agenda, would the clerk please read items 14D, 14A through D. Item A, an ordinance appropriating funds from the unappropriated general fund to account in the Parks and Recreation Department. 
B, an ordinance to amend chapter 1711, nuisance and property maintenance of the codified ordinances of the city of Reynoldsburg as amended. C, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement with modern office methods for the city hall copiers. And item D, an ordinance to accept the extension agreement from the Ohio Auditor of State for an independent public accountant for the years 2020 through 2022. May I have a motion to approve items 14A through D on the consent agenda for a third reading and approval? I so move. Council Member Strickland, may I have a second? Second. second. Council Member Baker, would the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Strickland? Aye. Council Member Silvati? Aye. Council Member Pecoraro? Aye. Council Member Lawson Rowe? Aye. Council Member Cotner? Aye. Council Member Baker? Aye. And Council Member Bryant? Aye. Madam President, the, the vote was 7 0. Ordinances A through D are approved with seven affirmative votes and no negative votes. Item 13, other council member, other council matters. Does anyone on council have any other further items that they would like to discuss this evening? The one thing that I'd like to mention is that the deadline is on us for the consent for the consensus. And I'd like to let everyone know that the deadline is next Wednesday, I believe, September the 30th. So if you have not completed the census, please do so. As of right now, I haven't heard of any extensions. I heard some chatter about it, but I haven't heard that they have extended that deadline as of yet. Um, but right now, if everyone hasn't completed their census, um, they probably should do so. I'm sorry, Mayor Begany, did you have something to say? I was just saying we're at 76.1%. So just throwing Ooh. that out. There. <laughs> um, As, Madam so President. Reynoldsburg is at 76. 76.1%, which is basically over 5% improvement from 2010. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, that's good news. So we still need some people in Reynoldsburg to be uh, accounted for. And so there are people out there that still need to complete their census and we encourage you to do so. Do we have any other comments from anyone else on council this evening? I'll add to the deadline list. Um, Monday is the deadline to register to vote, um, to change your address. Uh, if you've had a name change, um, if you're 17, but will be 18 before November 3rd or on November 3rd, uh, you do have the ability to vote this year. So get registered. You can do it online or on paper. Does anyone else have anything to add for this evening? Any other council matters or right. anything? Oh, sorry. Yes, Council Member Baker. Um, I didn't get to do it last time because my computer went on the fence, but I want to do it, make sure I do it this time and thanking all the retail workers, logistic workers, our police and firefighters for um, still working through in this pandemic. We are still in a pandemic, and every day these folks get up and uh, make sure that our lives are continuing to move. So I just want to put that out there and also it is beat Pickerington week so beat the Tigers and come out with the win so one more thing I think um, the census I think Madam President is extended to uh, October 31st so that is okay so it's extended okay thank you we can now continue to uh, fill up that form and be part of the Senate counting Does anyone else have anything else to add this evening? I'd like to thank everyone for participating in this virtual meeting this evening. Council's next meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 12th at 6.30 p.m. And at this time, council is unable to announce whether the meeting will be held in person or virtually. 
as though as there is no other further business this evening, I'd like to adjourn this meeting and the time is 828. Everyone have a good evening and stay safe. Have a good one. Thank you. Good evening. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.